Hi there, this is Rob at Reason101.net and I'm here to show you a bit of a basic tutorial about how to use the RPG-8 monophonic arpeggiator in Reason 4 and above. Um, basically, uh, if, you, if you're pretty familiar with the arpeggiator and how it works, you can probably skip over this tutorial, but I just wanted to walk through some of the features of it and how it operates um, for new people that are um, just introduced to Reason. So let's start off by um, what we'll do is we'll create a Thor device and inside the Thor I'm going to create um, I'm just gonna have the basic Epic Poly which I believe is the patch that comes with it. Um, I'm gonna open it up, I'm gonna turn off the delay, turn off the chorus. Okay, that's basically the way it sounds. Uh, we're going to go in to the sequencer and I am going to create a note lane that's four bars long and I'm just going to create a C major chord so we'll just go up here um, I'll just change this to bar uh, actually let's just delete that first should have changed this to bar earlier um, but anyway so I'll create it four bars long. So when we play it, that's what it sounds like. And I have it in loop mode, so it's going to just loop over. Now what we'll do is we'll go in here, and we will create our arpeggiator underneath. And if you create it underneath the Thor, it's going to automatically root everything. What's happening is the gate CV out is going to the gate here. The CV source is going to the note CV out. The mod wheel and the pitch bend are going to go to the pitch bend and the mod of the Thor. So that's that way it's controlling this device. Now the tricky part to the arpeggiator is that you have to have the notes. This note lane has to be on the arpeggiator lane, okay, the arpeggiator device, in order for you to hear the arpeggiator in action. If you don't have it on there, you're just going to hear the basic chord. So if you have it here, you're just going to hear the chord. If you have it down here though, okay, so that's the way that, that the arpeggiator works. Um, now what I'm going to do is, let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's bring the filter frequency down a little bit. So that's the arpeggiator at work. Um, and what you can do once you have the arpeggiator down is you can go in here, you can right click and you can select arpeggiator notes to track. If you do that in the sequencer what's happening is this arpeggiator has now become a note lane and the actual arpeggiator notes are embedded. Okay, and then what you can do is you can take those notes, you can put it on the Thor, you can delete this and, and go about playing it as you would a normal note lane. Um, I don't like doing that and the reason why is that when you want to go back a year later and do a remix of it or you want to change something around, you don't have the ability to do that if, um, if you don't actually have the device. But you can copy the notes to the track, you can permanently um, apply this arpeggiator to your track lane and then you can delete the arpeggiator afterwards. It is an option. I don't recommend using it though. So what are the other things doing? This is your CV control, okay, your velocity. And this section here is your MIDI CV converter. What this is short for in plain English terms, this is your keyboard section and this applies um, parameters that are going to be used um, based on how you play. If you have it on manual, which it's set to right now, the velocity on manual, um, what you play into your control surface is going to be what you hear. If you play it harder or softer, it's going to um, apply that, uh, apply the velocity of what you're playing on your keyboard controller. I would recommend keeping it on this most of the time. If you set it to anywhere below this, you can set it to a fixed level. So if I have it set to 72 or 70, for example, then no matter what I play on my keyboard controller, it's always going to be at a 70 velocity range. Okay, so that's how that works. Hold means that if you play a chord into it, like I'm playing now, well, actually,
actually let's just move up the chain here a little bit. If you hold on hold, and then I take my fingers off the keyboard, it's still going to play through until you remove hold. And I think you can kind of see this here if I'm playing it. So I'll just play this. So now my finger is off the key of A, and it's still holding it. If I press hold, it stops. This is great for when you're playing and you want to play the chords and you want the arpeggiator to keep going, you can let this go while you start playing some other devices in Reason. It's a really great feature. The octave shift, of course, is if you play your sequence, okay, it's going to move it up by one octave, or you can move it down by one octave. It just transposes the notes. That's all it's doing. Okay. Um, so now let's just play this through. You can play the notes going upward. You can play it so that it goes up and down. You can play it so that it goes down. You can play it so it randomly plays. And manual. Manual is a special case where um, if you play a low note to a high note, it's going to follow you upward. If you play a high note to a low note, it's going to follow you down based on how you play and how you input the notes. The octave over here is the range that um, you can play your ARP. If you have it on one octave, it's only going to play the one note. So you can play it, it's only going to play in the one octave range. Two octaves, it's going to give you two octave range going upward. Three goes up further and four goes up all the way. Now, if since this goes upward only, so it's going up um, a higher octave than what you're playing, if you want to bring it back down, there's no real way to do that. So what you can do is you can shift it down and then play it. Uh, let's see. Play it. You want it in two octave range, but you want to go below one octave. That's what your shift is for. Okay, now the insert means that you can insert notes at different varying levels. If you play the low, let's see. If you play the low range, it's going to insert a low note. It's going to start on the low note, and it's going to insert a low note every second note. If you go high, it's going to start on the high note of your chord and go down one note, and then insert a high note every second note. Three one basically means that it'll play three notes, go back one note, and then play another three notes. Four two goes four notes, goes back two notes, and then plays four notes again thing about the four notes is that you'll notice the four notes if you're playing a three um, if you're playing a chord based on three notes uh, the four two doesn't have any effect if you're playing a four note chord it will have an effect and you'll be able to hear that so that's something to keep in mind um, the rate means you can play it faster or you can play it slower the tie and or the gate length means that you're playing the notes are jammed together. If you lower it, it plays the notes quicker. Or a staccato, kind of. And this is a tie. Same thing on the matrix, when you see that tie, um, when you tie notes on a matrix, it's the same idea. Okay, so the gate length is how long the gate stays open. This stays open permanently and it'll, it'll basically mesh your notes together if you have it set closer to zero, it's going to separate your arpeggiated notes more. It's going to, the gate length will be shorter. Um, single note repeat basically repeats a single note, pretty self-evident. Um, you can turn on and off your arpeggiator section. Um, you can also have a pattern section, so if you're playing the notes, you can select areas where you drop out the notes.
So this way you can create a pattern within your arpeggiator. And then you can shuffle it a little bit too if you want to. You can also increase or decrease the amount of steps you have in your notes. It's like a mini matrix inside the arpeggiator. So that's pretty much the basics of how to use your arpeggiator. I hope uh, you find this interesting, and I hope it helps you work out um, how all these different parameters um, work. There's a lot more in-depth stuff uh, when you start getting into the CV that you can apply to your um, arpeggiator, but I'm not going to really get into that right now. I just wanted to show you a quick way of how the arpeggiator device works within Reason. So thanks a lot for listening. Um, I hope you come visit me at reason101.net. My name is Rob. Come back soon, and thanks a lot for listening.